Hey everybody, I'm Jill and welcome back to my farm. Today's gonna be part one um, of a video. This video is gonna take a couple days uh, to put together, but we are cleaning out our high tunnel, which is on the back part of our property, uh, trying to get ready for spring and summer planting. So um, I'll show you guys when we get down there, but we've got long 48 foot long beds on um, either end, on the farthest right and furthest left of flowers. And then down the middle, we had a uh, vegetable production and that was a lot of different cabbage varieties. We had Brussels sprouts, we had dino kale, rainbow chard, we had some direct seeded things. And so that's the bulk of what we have been harvesting and utilizing most of the winter, but now we're needing to get things out. And so I'm gonna harvest the rest of our dino kale today. Um, I've got my big old harvesting basket because I have quite a bit of it um, and we're actually going to freeze dry it and so uh, during the winter we use the fresh kale uh, for soups and salad and things like that however kale just is one of those vegetables that if you keep harvesting it keeps producing and so we've had this kale in the tunnel since like september and we have still been harvesting off of it totally wild, um, but we've used up about all we're gonna use up, and so we are going to freeze dry it. We have a Harvest Right freeze dryer. Uh, we're gonna freeze dry it, and we are actually going to make it into smoothie mixes. Um, we drink a lot of smoothies this time of year, especially going into the hot summer months, and we use kale powder uh, quite a bit. It's also gonna be really good um, to sprinkle into soups and things like that. So super versatile, uh, which is why I'm real excited about doing it like this. So let's head down to the tunnel. Uh, we'll harvest some kale and then I'll show you what you need to do before you actually put it in the freeze dryer. All right guys, I tried to get out here before it was crazy bright and as you can see, I failed. <laughs> So there was a few nights I didn't roll the sides down in the tunnel uh, whenever it got really, really cold. And you guys can kind of see here um, it did some damage. But the good thing about uh, freeze drying is that it's all gonna be, you know, dried and put into something anyway. So it's not like, um, you're really needing it for that fresh taste. And so what we'll do is we'll just go through and pinch this off and I'll have a bucket for the pigs. And I'll go feed that to the pigs and I'll show you guys when we go inside. But now you can see this is perfectly fine, which you could do this too if I was just to take it inside and cook it, absolutely. Um, but some of these that have a lot of frost damage, they probably wouldn't taste really well if I just sauteed them up in a cast iron skillet with some garlic and some onions. Uh, will actually be just fine freeze drying it. So. Look at these little trees behind me. It's gonna be so sad. I've been so accustomed to coming in here for the last several months and just seeing this beautiful, uh, you know, dino kale staring at me. And so it's gonna be different, but I know as the seasons are changing, this is part of it, growing new things. We don't typically grow a lot of kale in the spring, um, mainly just because it gets really hot here. You know, I mean, it is March, the beginning of March, and it was 80 yesterday, it's 80 today. Um, and so, you know, usually by springtime, it feels a lot like summer uh, here in Arkansas. And so, um, you know, I think it's, we've also just had so much of it too that we're kind of ready for a new crop. Um, but let's harvest some kale. just harvested a huge basket. I mean, this thing is like loaded. So 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it inside, start the next step of this. Um, I'm actually not even gonna be washing this off. That is the benefit of growing organically. Nothing has been sprayed on them. They don't look like they have any signs of pest damage. So I can immediately go in and start doing what I need to do for the next step, which is, in my opinion, a large benefit of growing all natural and organically. You just don't have to worry about that stuff. Uh, one thing that I think is funny, I preach a lot about growing what you're gonna eat. Um, and I think as a beginner gardener, this is something that many of us probably have struggled with. I know I did. And this kale reminds me of that. Um, when I was first gardening, I remember going to the farmer's market and buying kale by the bunches and rainbow chard. And I remember planting kale and rainbow chard and I'd grow it and it would end up like rotting in the fridge or dying on the plant because I didn't eat kale. Um, and I chalk that up to largely like not knowing how to cook it. It took me several years of growing chard before I really realized how to bring out uh, those flavor notes and like really make chard taste good. It's so funny every time I think about kale, I think about the journey we've been on and how I used to just grow kale just just to grow kale, not to eat it, um, which I don't recommend, by the way, if you're a new gardener, grow food you enjoy eating. I think there's something so wonderful about trying new varieties, and sometimes you may like those varieties and sometimes you don't, um, but when I knew I didn't like kale and I still grew kale, it didn't really make a lot of sense, but I talked to a lot of beginner gardeners and I think that's a pretty common thing. Now I've come to appreciate the abundance <laughs> Uh, that this beautiful easy plant has brought me but let's go take this inside and start on step number two holy cow <laughs> holy cow that's a lot that is a lot that's beautiful the way you arranged it thank you it's really all just kind of stepped in there if I'm being all right so Nathan has got out these sheets for me. This is what we use to lay everything on. Uh, the freeze dryer has these little slats that you just stick them in there. Um, so originally we had talked about pre-freezing this because that is what we do with, <laughs> thank you darling. <laughs> that is usually what we do with all of like our leftovers and things like that, even the eggs we did. So why, one, I guess, why do we pre-freeze? And then you had said, we're actually not gonna do that with the kale. So can you just kind of better explain that? Well, because if it had, if it's any food with a thicker membrane or yeah. you've got some sort of um, soup or chili or something like that, that's mm -hmm. high moisture content, got a lot of different components, then yes, it's better to pre-freeze first. Uh, with this kale, uh, I don't believe you do. Yeah. Um, the only thing is I'm probably going to cut these stalks out. Okay, and I only have some that are this big. A lot of them are just like small, kind of baby kale. So they don't have this real thick? They don't thick. have that real thick. There's maybe okay. just a few of those. Yeah, so these larger ones, we'll probably just cut that membrane out. Okay, cool. And just cut them in like smaller pieces because eventually what we're going to do with this is Throw it in the food processor. Mm -hmm. Am I jumping ahead here? No, I told him. I yeah, told him. throw it in the food processor, make some real fine kale powder um, to add to our smoothies. Yep. So. All right, well, let's get to chopping. Get to chop. I'm deveining the kale. You're doing a great job.
What's up friends? It is day number two. Uh, yesterday I harvested all of this kale with you guys. We uh, popped it in the freeze dryer. Nathan's cooking dinner. You wanna say hi, babe? Hey guys. <laughs> so we just took it out of the freeze dryer. Whoa, sounds... Crispy. It does sound so crispy. Let me get you guys focused here. All right, have you tried it? Uh, I have. And what's it taste like? Kale. Tastes like kale still? Cool. So yeah, we've got a bunch of these sheets. Now what I'm going to do is pop it all in our food processor and then we're gonna see how fine we can get it. Um, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like after that. All right, so I am using a Ninja food processor. It's pretty simple. I think I'll be able to um, put a lot in here. This is what I did when we did our eggs. Um, I think I mentioned that to you guys. We freeze dried a bunch of eggs. And then when they came out of the freeze dryer, I broke it up, stuck it in here, and it worked perfect. I just got done. Check out that color. The yeah. color is stunning. It's crazy though. Four trays made this small little bit. Um, since we are going to continue to do batches of this uh, throughout the weekend, I went ahead and got a bigger jar. Um, this was actually a applesauce jar that I reused and then I just got um, you know, a, a lid and a sealer that way it'll stay airtight. And then I did also get the oxygen absorber. Will you grab me one of those? So that is something that is important. If you are freeze drying, you are gonna need one of these little handy dandy things to throw in uh, the container that you're using. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just chunk this in here now and then pour my kale on top. All right, so now you guys can see I've got the start of some beautiful kale powder. It smells... Uh, well, <laughs> it smells really earthy, but this is going to be great. Primarily, we're going to use this, like I had mentioned, for smoothies and things like that. Um, however, if I'm making a soup, I could also add this in for that kale flavor. Um, one thing that I did do, and this seems pretty fine, but you notice when I was pulsing it in the Ninja, is that I continuously just kept adding more kale to it. That way it kept um, grinding down the kale that was already existing in here into a smaller, finer powder. Uh, for me, I find that in smoothies, it just mixes a lot better the smaller that it is. But if that didn't bother you and you were throwing it, you know, just in soups and that was, you know, the purpose of it, I think you probably wouldn't have to uh, make sure that it was as fine. But I have a little corner over here um, back behind me under the cabinets of all of my smoothie stuff. And so I keep my hemp seeds in here. I keep my chia seeds and then we have our flax seeds. And so I'm just going to take this jar and add it in here with all my other smoothie mixes and then stick it under the counter. But that was so easy. So over uh, the weekend, that is what we're gonna be doing is chopping up a lot of kale, uh, sticking it on the trays and popping it in the freeze dryer. It really didn't take that long either. Um, it was done in about 20 hours, I think. Um, and we did not end up pre-freezing it like we had mentioned too. So that was what we were up to. Thanks for hanging out with me. If you are thinking about preserving the harvest, right? If you're thinking about what you're planting for the summer, how you wanna put that up, I highly, highly encourage you guys to think about a freeze dryer. Um, I know it is an investment 100%, but doing that is a lot more hands-off and a lot easier um, than some of the other methods I've done. I know this year especially, we're real excited about um, using it for like our tomatoes and things like that that we could uh, throw in soups and such. And so I do think it's gonna be a very versatile utilized tool on our farm that I'm gonna be extremely, extremely thankful that we have. I am already extremely, extremely thankful. I know that the freeze dryer was kind of Nathan's thing. He was so excited. 
And I'll tell you, I think I've used it as much as he has. Um, it's just been really cool. I'm like having all these ideas coming into my head. I really want to like freeze dry some beets. We freeze dried the carrots. Uh, they ended up tasting really good. It was a fun little snack. Um, and so when we ferment, all of our beets, which I planted a huge bed today. When we ferment those, I'm gonna take those round uh, ferments and actually put them in the freeze dryer and see if they're like just this really delicious fermented chip. Um, so I'm gonna play around with some few things and see, uh, but thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. If you're interested in the freeze dryer that we have, I'm gonna put a link down in the description below, but I'd also love to know what is your number one way to preserve uh, your harvest? We are still, you know, harvesting and preserving things from the winter garden and we are well into spring at this point. So I'm having to get really creative, but I'd love to know how are you uh, preserving your stuff? How do you plan on preserving your stuff uh, this summer when you got the bulk of your produce coming in. Uh, but I hope everyone has a wonderful Saturday. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll talk to you soon.